Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. To celebrate the release this month of Seiko's new 5KX GMT, I thought I would make a top 10 list. Any excuse really, these videos are always a lot of fun to make. The Seiko may be hot, but it's not the only choice of GMT under 1,000 US dollars, as this list will demonstrate. There are plenty of other four-handed, two-time zone watches out there for a relatively modest budget, if one is prepared to do a little bit of digging around. But why buy a GMT at all? Well, this style of watch is great if you travel across multiple time zones, if you do business across multiple time zones, with a head office overseas or interstate, for example, or if, like me, you have a specific interest i.e. my mother, in another time zone across the world. And let's be honest, they are cool. GMTs are just cool. Even if you're not an international jet setter with business interests in a dozen countries, you can pretend that you are. As always, I've tried to mix it up in terms of price from under $200 to bang on a thousand and perhaps just a tiny bit over. In terms of movement, there'll be battery quartz, solar quartz and automatic self-winding offerings all present. And in terms of style, there will be dive GMTs as well as more dressy numbers, original designs and a couple of homages thrown in there as well. I'll leave links to everything in the description of the video, but obviously do your own digging, do your own research, find the best prices for you your local region and your local currency. All right, let's get on with it. Okay, why wait? Let's kick off the list with a watch that inspired the list, the new Seiko 5 Sport GMT. Now the list price on these is 475 US dollars, but I didn't pay list price and neither should you. Three colors at the moment are available, but I'm sure that will expand, blue, black, and orange. Now there is nothing particularly new here apart from that movement. It should all feel very familiar to you if you have owned an SKX or a 5KX in the past or indeed in the present. It's a 42mm diameter watch with 22mm lug width and fairly girthier, almost 14mm thick, but Seiko know how to make a big watch wear like a small watch. A compact lug to lug, tapering jubilee, super smooth case finishing, all help it to wear well. The 4R34 movement is based on the ever popular 4R series, found in turtles, samurais, and pretty much every Seiko under $600. What's new here is the fourth GMT hand. The Hardlex bezel insert is nice, the Hardlex dial covering, not so nice. But I see no reason why 5KX mod parts won't go straight onto this. I will definitely be modding mine. I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking along those lines already. So again, typical Seiko, we all rush out to buy them even though we know the specifications aren't quite what we're looking for or quite what they perhaps should be considering the price they are charging. This is going to be a huge release for Seiko, not just because I think they'll shift a lot of units of it, but because the movement, I have no doubt, will find itself in hundreds, if not thousands, of other brands' watches, just like the NH35 and NH36 have. Okay then, number two, which comes with an apology. I'm sorry, I don't know how I missed this one before. It's a Swiss-made automatic GMT with sapphire crystal and an 80-hour power reserve for as little as 325 US dollars. It's a Tissot Chemin de Touré GMT. I must admit, I had never heard of this model, which is a surprise because it seems like such a nugget. They're not super common, but I have found multiple listings for several different color versions and at great prices. $420 from Walmart, under $400 on eBay, and if you're okay with a leather strap variant, less than $325 on Joma Shop. How on earth did I miss that one? I'll leave a link to the Joma Shop listing in the description of the video. Looks wise, it's definitely one of the dressiest pieces on today's list, with applied Romans, no loom, and a multi-link bracelet if that's the one you go for. It's full sized at 42 millimeters, 50 meters of water resistance is more than enough for this style of watch, and that, my friends, is a Powermatic 80. It is rare to find those in watches for less than 350 bucks, and I've never seen one with a fourth GMT hand priced so low. If you're okay with the looks and you can find one, this Tissot looks like a bit of a steal, frankly. Okay, we've looked at a couple of big brand GMTs, both automatics. Let's look at a micro brand GMT in quartz. It's the Phoebus Eagle Ray GMT, and I think it is one of the best watches they've made over the last five years. 
These are $220, but I'll leave a 10% discount code also in the description of the video, taking the price down to just under 200 bucks, making it the cheapest watch on today's list. It's powered by a Swiss Ronda 515 movement and has a great set of specifications, including 300 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, domed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective undercoating, plenty of loom on the hands and the indices, and looks that, whilst they may not be to everyone's taste, you certainly can't accuse them of borrowing that particular particular design, can you? It's a 41, but nice and slim, and wears well on the supplied Tropic strap. As discussed, GMTs make great travelling companions, and there is no more reliable a travelling companion than a quartz watch with a fresh battery. And unlike a lot of micro brands, these are in stock, you can actually buy them today. Right, at number four, it's a watch with a design not quite as original as the Phoebus, and one that is actually much harder to buy, but a watch that is becoming a bit of a hobby horse on this channel. I really like the Steinhardt Steve McQueen. I think it is fantastic value for money, Swiss made and therefore containing either a 2893 or the Salita equivalent. Honestly, I don't think it matters either way which one you get. It's an all stainless steel watch with fabulous retro looks from a well-established brand, all for less than $600. These are available in either 39mm or 42mm diameters, but they do wear quite large and quite flat, so bear that in mind if you're considering one. If you don't recognise the design, it's a Rolex Explorer 2 from the 1970s, one called the Steve McQueen, not because he owned one, but apparently because he liked it. Allegedly. That's it. A good one of those will set you back almost 50 grand these days. So personally, I don't have a problem with Steinhardt um, borrowing the design, considering their own watch is so reasonably priced. So reasonably priced, in fact, that they sell out very, very quickly. Best thing to do is leave your email with the companies who sell them and wait patiently for a restock. I think that patience will be rewarded. Next up at number five, it is one of only a couple of watches today that I'm prepared to recommend sight unseen. It's a Longines Conquest VHP GMT. That's a lot of letters. VHP stands for Very High Precision, and this GMT model fits into a range of high accuracy conquests, all with movements rated to plus or minus five seconds per year. It has a multifunction crown and a couple of presses on that crown will reverse the home time and GMT hand positioning, meaning if you do travel back and forth between two specific time zones, you won't have to worry about switching your watch back and forth, a couple of button pushes will suffice. There is also a slightly bizarre feature whereby you can set the watch using the flash on your phone and an app you download. Your phone kind of speaks to the watch in Morse code or something, which must have seemed like a great idea in the meeting, but but frankly, you'll look like a terrorist if you try and do that on an international flight these days. These are available in two sizes, either 4020 or 4322. I would have preferred 100 meters of water resistance to the 50 that they claim, but apart from that, the specs are good. Joma Shop has these with the carbon dial available for just under $800. Other dial options and sized options are available elsewhere for well under a grand. Moving on, we have another watch that would act as a perfect long-term travel companion. It's light, it's tough, it's durable, it doesn't cost a fortune. It's a Citizen Promaster EcoDrive in titanium. These are around 375 US dollars on eBay, but I managed to pick one up recently for about $100 less than that. The deals are out there, people. To be honest, I could have picked any number of Citizen EcoDrive GMTs to fill this particular slot on today's list. There are quite a few of them that tick the same boxes. Those boxes being full size, this one is 43 millimeters, ISO rated, so it's a proper 200 meter dive watch. It's the only watch on today's list with a GMT 24 hour markings on the chapter ring, but 60 minute dive time markings on the bezel. Sapphire crystal, a very nice wearable titanium bracelet, decent loom and a movement powered by light that in theory you should get decades of reliable service from. Citizens may be a little bit vanilla, but their watches are solidly made, fantastic value for money, and sometimes you want a watch on your wrist that flies under the radar. Something unassuming and utilitarian, and this citizen can most certainly be described as both of those things. At number seven, it's a 2022 model GMT that isn't made by Seiko, but it's a little bit hot in its own right. It's the Timex Q GMT. This one is capitalizing on Timex's recent resurgence as a brand, the love of all things retro, 
and the fact that it brings a two-tone Pepsi bezel within the reach of mere mortals. These are about 220 US dollars direct from Timex, but I strongly suggest you try and get a voucher of some kind, give them your email, do whatever it takes to try and get 10 to 20% off that price. You will be much happier with the watch, I'm sure, if you do so. It's a real retro charmer, this one, with acrylic crystal, an aluminium bezel insert, and a multi-link bracelet that finally doesn't try to remove all of your arm hair like the one on the three-hander Q did. It's the smallest watch on today's list as well at 38 millimeters, but it still has plenty of presence thanks to the dome crystal and that bicolored look. It's another watch powered by Ronda Quartz, so it should tick reliably for decades, requiring no more than a 50 cent battery every couple of years, which you can easily replace yourself thanks to that convenient battery hatch. Autos are great, but they do come with their own set of recurring costs, don't forget. Now at numbers eight and numbers nine are two watches that only just scraped into the $1,000 self-imposed budget today. But if you can find one, then they're both definitely worth looking at. The first is the Christopher Ward C63 Sealander GMT. Christopher Ward, in my humble opinion, of course, makes some of the best watches it is possible to purchase for less than a thousand US dollars. I've only reviewed four of them, but I've always been really impressed by what you get for your money. As discussed, the money required for one of these is just a smidge over a grand, and even then you don't quite get the bracelet. But as always, if you've got some patience, throw them your email, wait for a sale, and I'm sure you'll be able to take a little bit off that. I also hear that Christopher Ward buying in pounds and then converting is often cheaper than allowing them to convert to your local currency, but don't quote me on that. Try for yourself. The looks of this one are very Rolex Explorer 2 current generation, but it's not a one for one copy and Christopher Ward are finally sorting out their logo and logo placement problems, which have plagued the brand for a decade or more. Case finishing looks excellent, as does the Loom, and it comes with their 60-60 warranty, which is 60 days of free global returns and a 60 month, five year warranty on the movement. So if you're not completely happy with it when it arrives, you can send it back. But like I said, I strongly suspect that if you can pick one of these up for less than a grand, you'll be very, very happy with it. Now, at number nine, it's a watch that I'm sure some of you will be rather surprised to see me recommending today in a list. It's a watch that caused one of my biggest dummy spits over the last five years, and a watch that saw me swear off reviewing any Seikos costing over 1,000 US dollars ever again. It's the Seiko Sharp Edge GMT. Look, this is a great watch. This is my own macro footage that I recorded last year when I borrowed one of these, fully intending to review it. I love the pattern effect on the dial. The dial itself is busy with those extra complications, a power meter at 930 and a date complication down at six, but it isn't crushed or hard to read. It's a big chunky watch at 42 mil, 14 mil thick and 180 grams with all of the links. So there's plenty of heft to it, if that's your thing. 100 meters of water resistance, Seiko's famed Lumi Bright Loom, as well as Sapphire Crystal, give this one the specs it needs to be a real all-rounder. So why did I spit the dummy? Well, I spat the dummy because of yet another one of Seiko's misalignment issues between the 24 hour bezel and the index at 12 o'clock. As you can see, it's not just a little bit off, it's way off. And for the RRPs on these, customers deserve better. So why is it on today's list? Well, it's on today's list because at its heart, it's a great watch and one that has come down considerably in price over the last 18 months. These are now on eBay for just under 1100 US dollars. Not long after I clicked on this particular listing, saving it into my watch list, I got a 5% discount offer from the seller, taking it down to $1,025. The unfortunate paradox is that if you are keen on one of these, I would recommend you buy it from a store in person and thoroughly check the watch that you will be actually buying. However, the best prices tend to be online where such an inspection is not possible. Like I said, it's an unfortunate paradox. I will leave you to work out the solution. And finally, at number 10, I had to squeeze one AliExpress watch on here somewhere. Also, it is the most blatant of the homages. The most iconic GMT on the market today is undoubtedly the Rolex GMT Master 2, but they are $15,000 and impossible to buy. If you're okay with a one-for-one -one copy, but with a different brand name on the dial, I suggest looking at the Kronos. And I suggest it because it is very, very good for the price they're charging. Case finish is excellent, bezel action is crisp, 
the Jubilee is comfortable and it's just the right weight. The Loom is also fantastic and it's available with no waiting list and without having to genuflect to your AD for under $350. Now for that money, you don't get a Swiss clone of the 2893, you get a Chinese clone, but it's a well-respected one by Hangzhou. I appreciate such blatant design plagiarism is not for everyone, but when you wear one of these, you'll wonder how on earth Rolex can possibly justify the extra 14 and a half grand for theirs. So there you have it, plenty of non-Seiko GMTs out there for you under a grand, and of course, a couple of Seikos. If you can stretch the budget, the Christopher Ward is awesome. At the other end, the Phoebus Eagle Ray GMT looks totally different, and to my eyes, the design just works. If you're in the mood for more four-handed action, check out my review of the Phoebus, or treat yourself with a review of the Rolex Explorer 2. Thanks for watching, I will see you in a future video.